Hi, Mitch Winger back with another video on data analytics and machine learning. In this video, we'll discuss similarity and distance functions. Hope you enjoy. Okay, let's get started. Similarity and distance. Similarity is at the core of many data mining methods that we will discuss with the notion that if two things are similar in some ways, well, maybe they share other attributes as well that we're interested in. And distance is a common way of looking at similarity. All right, so there are lots of different business cases where we use similarity and distance. Classification and regression, these are two that we'll hit on time and time again, but other approaches use it as well. Grouping, how do we group things into clusters or into other naturally occurring groups that we can recognize? Providing recommendations. So we all have been on Amazon, Netflix, et cetera, where we see recommendations that we should buy, things that we should watch, friends that maybe we should reach out to, people that should be connections. Also, we use similarity to reason from similar cases. And we use this all the time in medicine and law. We do it naturally as humans, and we can do it from a data mining perspective as well. So we can represent many things as a set of data values. Once we have done that, represented them as a set of data values, then we can display it as a point in some data space. And this data space can have n dimensions, could have one dimension, could have two, could have many dimensions, depending on the number of features that we're evaluating. Once we have that data point defined, we can compare it to other data points mathematically. And this is the basis for nearly all data analytics. Many techniques basically take the view that data points in the same region should be similar. And from there, we can use all kinds of different techniques to draw boundaries between these groups. After that, we use those boundaries to make predictions for new values where we don't yet know the classification. Now, the technique could be a decision tree. It could be a linear regression line or any number of other linear classifiers. We use distances between those data objects to determine that similarity. One of the most commonly used distances is what we call Euclidean distance. And you can see it represented in this diagram by the green line. It's simply the straight path from one point to another. Now note that we represent it in two dimensions here but Euclidean distance can be calculated no matter how many dimensions are in the data space. To calculate Euclidean distance, we take the square root of the sum of the squared differences along all dimensions, however many dimensions we happen to have. So that's the difference in values for every feature we want to include in our model. So in essence, we're basically applying the Pythagorean theorem for each dimension. Now, Euclidean distance is probably the most common distance function in use, although it's not necessarily considered the most robust. So that takes us to the next similarity function, which is Manhattan distance. This is considered more robust than Euclidean it's calculated as if you have to traverse the actual data points to get from one to another, much like you would navigate when walking in Manhattan, thus the name. You can't just walk through all the buildings to get from the Empire State Building to the Intrepid. You have to go so many short blocks and so many long blocks. So that's the concept we're using here. As you can see, we've got a red, blue, and yellow line, each taking different paths to point B but in each of those cases, the distance ends up being the same. We're going X number of blocks one way, we're going X number of blocks the other way. So you can see that calculation is simply the sum of the absolute differences between the measures. And again, it's for 
however many dimensions or features that we happen to have in our model. So Minkowski was able to generalize this. So the Minkowski distance calculation generalizes both Euclidean and Manhattan by adding this Q value into it. We could set Q to one or two, depending on which approach we're going to use. And as you can see, the calculation works out fine just either way. If we set Q to one, well, then we're calculating the Manhattan distance. If we set Q to two, we're calculating the Euclidean distance. Again, it's the sum of the differences for each of the variables. And then we either keep that absolute value or we square it, the one or the two in Q. And then we either use that value to the power of one or we take the square root of it to the power of one half. All right, so that's it for our discussion on distance. It's a relatively straightforward concept but it's important to understand as it's the basis for many of the techniques we will explore going forward. I hope you found this video useful. Be sure to check out the other videos in this series.